Thank you. So, uh, so Rahul, um, would you would you tell something about the culture at ISI? So, I have heard that mostly after the lectures, people um, are with the professors, uh, you know, in the evening, and and they're discussing problems. And then, uh, you know, I've also heard that most of the people usually stay within the campus, even though they are from Delhi. Is it true? Does does ISI offer hostel uh, to everyone, even if you're from Delhi, or how is it there? Uh, yeah, so uh, talking about culture, so um, as I told you, I mean, uh, at ISI, usually two type of people came. Either they want to go into corporate or those who want to go into PhD. So if I would say about the corporate, so corporate placements are excellent. I mean, it's best, but PhD placements are, I know it's like very, very good, extremely good. I mean, people go to Stanford, Harvard, MIT, these kind of institutions. Okay, so uh, like, and with regards to placements as well, I was the placement coordinator over there. So for my batch, the placement was also very, very good. So yeah, so those who want to go into PhD and all, they usually spend a lot of time, you know, uh, they are, while talking to their professors about the problems and all, because through, uh, throughout these two years, they got to interact about, they got to interact with the professors and they, they find themselves, yeah, what is interesting for them in what field they can go and pursue their PhD and all. So these two years is fully of exploration for those who wanted to uh, go abroad and pursue their PhD. Because at ISI, uh, immediately after completing their master's, people uh, go to their PhD, they don't need RA and all. So yeah, most like those who are interested towards the PhD, I mean, they do go to uh, uh, those colleges. And uh, talking about culture, I mean, uh, so basically the diversity of my batch was like that. So we have about 24 students and 50% uh, of them are from IIT and 50% of us like, are like from the normal like the economic graduates. So this, uh, this was the diversity and the, there is a difference between diversity in other colleges and at ISI. So, uh, you know, due to the small batch, there is a very benefit, benef this is the very beneficial things for the small batches as well. When I was in IS, uh, DSC, so what happens is that DSC has a very large batch. It's like 300 people. So most, and it will happen that many, sometimes your batch, you won't know about your batch when itself. So juniors ki to baati chod do. And in ISI, throughout the two years, you know everyone, junior, senior, professor, everyone you get to know about everyone. And you, I mean, I'm not just talking about uh, everyone in a sense of, yeah, I know that person's name. I mean, you personally know about that person. So this is all about ISI. And uh, I, with regards to uh, the placement that you are talking about, as uh, Prajwal also said, so uh, when, when you step into the ISI, you don't have to worry about the placement, just forget about it. Eventually, it will happen. So when I was in DSC, so I was very scared. 300 people are there. There is a lot of competition, these kind of things. You get to uh, get to fear from those things. But when you step into ISI, those fears got away. And uh, yeah, so I would also I'd like to add about the placement stats that happens for my batch. So uh, from my batch, the placement, I mean, the highest stipend was uh, the highest uh, placement offer was 37 lakh. And the uh, average was uh, 23 and the median was 24 and the lowest was around 17 or 18. So this was the placement for my, my batch. So yeah, this is all about, I can say. Right. I think, uh, you know, uh, this is what I professor used to mention. And this is true for all the colleges that we have today on panel, whether it is IGID, RISI, DSC or uh, JNU that the return that we get is much more than what you could have got doing an MBA. You invest so much money doing an MBA and uh, the package you get is at par with anyone doing an MBA and the amount of money you have invested is less. Though the effort invested is more, but definitely the money invested is less. Yeah. So, so Siddharth, I would like to come to you with another question. So suppose somehow a student has got into DSC. What do you think if he is not good at maths, would he be able to survive DSC or not? The student has somehow cleared the exam. Maybe through merit basis, they have got into DSC. What next? Would they be able to survive if they're not that good at maths? Uh, I think he will be able to survive. If he is consistent, I, I mean, he has to study daily, on daily basis. He, uh, it can't be that uh, last day, it can't be that last day. Last day, it not so he has to be consistent, uh, meet with professors. I mean, uh, talk to your classmates 
बैट्समेंट्स आर हेल्पफुल मतलब बैट सो वी हैव प्रॉब्लम सेट्स कमिंग एवरी वीक वी हैव ट्यूटोरियल्स सो I think he will be able to, but uh, he has to be consistent. I mean, he can't leave everything for the last day. Uh, agar wo chhodta to he's definitely going to fail. Uh, but yes, he has to be consistent. Okay, okay, sure. So, Khushi, what was the statistics for the number of people who people who went from first year to second year? Maybe if you can tell. I mean. So for us, it used to be fifty percent used to cut down. One once we would go from the first year to second year. Is it still true at DSC? Uh, I won't say fifty percent, but uh, definitely people do plunk. Uh, but uh, it depends. Like uh, now, I think many people are able to clear it, but still, uh, I don't have the exact numbers. But uh, many people around, I think around ten of them got uh, three bats in their first sem, and we have three exams only. So, uh, otherwise, out of three hundred, I guess uh, almost seventy uh, to eighty people had uh, one or two ERs. Okay. Okay. Right. So, how is the culture at uh, the Ratan Tata Library? Do people still sit at? you know till till late nights or how how is the culture at the library yeah well it is the same i think uh, people do sit there now uh, the librarian has to just push us out that now it's time to go uh, people do sit there we have our uh, discussions uh, like uh, we get to know other uh, department people as well like there is a uh, commerce department uh, obviously commerce is not allowed there but uh, uh, we have sociology geography and of uh, some commerce uh, people do come there so we get to know them as well and uh, we can uh, we uh, got to know many uh, of our seniors from there as well like they were studying the subject and we were like okay you are from economics because obviously out of 300 people it's tough to know uh, many of them and uh, we sit there from morning to evening when we have the exams till 8 in the night even if it's chilling uh, december evenings out there and uh, it's a great culture then we go out to jp tea stall i think you would be remembering it so i think it's more or less the same right right sure uh, yes jp tea stall definitely is a very famous one and one gets one one has to take four to five cups of tea every day to survive uh, so so yamini you mentioned that you were at hansraj and then you went to igidr so are you originally from delhi uh so i'm based in gurgaon and um that i committed delhi so how easy or difficult it is to survive in bombay you know once you shift to igidr how is the hostel there and how's the food most importantly at igidr so um it's very ironical that it's very very easy to survive in the most expensive city in india if you are at igidr i mean it cannot get a uh, more affordable because so so i'll break it down for you 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 know the major fee that they charge for igidr in comparison to your return on investment there Uh, as far as the hostel and the food is concerned, so hostel fee again like two hundred per month, as as we we had in Delhi University, very very subsidized. And in terms of food, so you have to pay for it. Uh, whatever time of the day you are going there, so they offer three times in the uh canteen the food and one 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 time snack, evening snack. So uh. the food quality is really really good and you get a lot of variety so it's not like the usual mess food that we hear about um, which makes people sick quite literally so th- that is really fantastic apart from that even the snacks or the breakfast that they offer uh, in terms of very very light uh, appetizers etc those are also really good so the food quality is good Thirty rupee per plate doesn't cost much in a city like Mumbai. 
and the campus is based very near to the market in Goregao suburb. So that is also the very very uh, convenient location for anybody who wants to just go outside and eat there. I get that. Are there any extracurricular activities also at IGID or is it core into, um, you know, you just oh, have yes. to study core um, into masters? No, 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 no. So, of course, there are hectic hours of study. That's one part. But apart from that, since everybody is coexisting at the campus, right from the faculty to the librarian and other administrative staff to the students, so one, you get to play with uh, the children of faculty. So we used to literally have one big team and then we used to get segregated into two and then play ranging from volleyball to basketball to badminton. Apart from that, we also have annual day fests there uh, and annual sports week, to be honest. And um, there, everybody from faculty to everyone, the family of faculty, anyone who wants to participate in, so there's this one big group of family, you can say. And then we have various other extracurricular activities. Third thing, another, another thing is about the swimming pool. So you also get pool facilities in IGIDR. So yeah, there are a lot of extracurriculars. I get that. So so the campus is, I mean, I have seen some pictures and I, it seems that the campus is really beautiful, uh, the IGIDR campus. Uh, you literally get to see the whole skyline of Andheri Jogeshwari, every, everything like the northern uh, parts of Mumbai. And apart from that, the campus, campus is uh, really away from the hustle bustle of city. So you do not get the feeling that, you know, you are living in a tier one city. But again, at the same time, you can just take a bus, take a cab 15 minutes away from the main locals and everything. So yeah. Right, of course. So, um, so Vivek, I would like to ask you: um, Were you, um, were you? I mean, uh, since you, it's it's been one year that you have been at DSC. Uh, did you get an opportunity to attend the winter school at DSC? Yeah, I, I think when we entered, when we got admission, right after fifteen days, we uh, winter school was held there. Yeah? But uh, I somehow couldn't join it because I had to go back home due to some issues. But uh, I think uh, other people have had joined yeah, over there. Any anyone who could tell about winter school a bit, if if you have attended that? Yeah, it just happened in the mid of December, and our classes started uh, early December. So we were fortunate enough to get the chance to attend it. It's a three, four days uh, event where uh, we have main guest distinguished like, uh, uh, speakers coming to the uh, lecture theater and giving uh, uh, great lectures. And other than that, we have other simultaneous lectures happening in other rooms uh, 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 by uh, many other uh, uh, scholars and researchers uh, from uh, diverse institutes. Uh, uh, we can name any like IGIDR, ISI, and many others. So we get to interact with them. And then we have many uh, uh, economists, uh, renowned economists from all over the world. Maybe it's MIT or uh, University of Chicago or what else. So yeah, it's a great experience getting to know uh, and getting to hear such distinguished speakers. True, true. And um, I think it has, again, I mean, I recently got an invite for this year's winter school. So uh, do attend that. It, 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 it's an excellent thing. I mean, I still attend that thing. So, you know, when, when I come to the campus, I will definitely come and meet you guys in person. Definitely. Okay. So, uh, Vishali, what about JNU? Does it have any extracurricular activities also? How is the placement cell at JNU? How's the internship opportunities at JNU? Uh, so there are no extracurricular activities as such, but uh, there is a club of free thinking economics where you can debate about the recent developments in uh, economics and the campus is huge. It's like a thousand acre campus in Delhi. Like it's unimaginable Kitna Bada campus hoga in Delhi. So you can just roam around the campus, explore, uh, sit at Dhabas debate about the current things that are going in the world and the placement cell is a student-run cell 
they try their best to bring companies every uh, year so few companies are regular recruiters like excel axtria inturi consulting and speaking about internship opportunities internship opportunities are mainly focused in the arena of think tanks ngos and uh, i would say one of my friends did intern at pwc one of my friends interned at mospi uh, some of them interned at fiki so yeah there are plenty opportunities available if you are eagerly looking for it got it got it 